Hi, I'm Paul Duchesne, and uh, welcome to Mama Paul in the Kitchen. Today is Wednesday, August 18th, 2021. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to uh, make the green part of the salad that I've been making on a pretty regular basis. I'm basically going to repeat myself a little bit. And uh, I spoke in the beginning of this whole series about how I developed this dietary regimen that I'm on right now. And it's sort of a combination. It started with macrobiotics or macroneurotics. And it sort of ended with uh, raw food and food combining, quite a combination to say the least. Uh, out of it, what I've drawn is uh, what I call this diet of mine, which I start the day with a fruit salad. We start the day with a fruit salad, and that's the fruit salad, typical fruit salad I might start the day with. These grapes, cherries, some peaches in there, a little apple, lots of blueberries. I always go for five. I try to, I try to work with the number five with uh, when I'm combining vegetables or fruits or anything of, of that nature. God knows where that came from, but somebody in the kitchen said it many years ago, and it seems to work as a good rule of thumb. So we start with the fruit salad, and then I'll have two meals a day, and one might be carbohydrate-centric, one might be protein-centric. I might violate those rules and mix them up. But what I will have, I'll have a salad with each one of the meals. So I'm going to put in a salad and possibly a second vegetable, but the big thing is the salad. And the salad is increasing my intake of raw vegetables, I'm increasing my intake of enzymes, which are increasing the digestibility factor of all the foods. And that's the whole point about the raw vegetables and the raw fruits, is they're loaded with these enzymes. And the enzymes is what people go out and spend money uh, buying in order to improve their digestion. So the salad is the basis of my meal. And what I've done with the salad is I'll make the salad, I make the green part of the salad, the lettuces, I make the hard part of the salad, which uh, I've explained a few times. In my case, I'm using um, red pepper, fennel, and a celery. I complement that with using some jicama or cucumber right now. So those are the hard vegetables on top of the green vegetables. And then my super sexy little sprinkle I put on top a uh, combination of all of these herbs over here, starting with kale chips. Today, I'm just going to focus on the green part because that's what I ran out of. So I do this show usually on Tuesday or Wednesday every week. I try to, and I'll make like a week load of a week's load of uh, of the, the salad. So I don't have to make it every day. With the greens, I generally try to maybe twice a week. So if I put these greens together today, they should last me, you know, three, maybe three and a half, four days. And then for the second half of the week, I'll, I'll, I'll recombine uh, the vegetable, the uh, salad uh, greens together, make it through the week. I've got enough of the hard vegetables. This is how much I've got left over from last week. And these are the, uh, this is the uh, red pepper and the celery and the fennel. And I've got that much left over. So I'll probably wind up using this today and then we may cut some more up later on. The green vegetables I'm going to use today are, well this is brand new, this just came out and this was from Santa Rosa and it was organic spring mix from Longer Table Farm. Never heard of them before, but they're pretty local. Really gorgeous uh, spring mix. So we've got that and I've talked about the watercress. Watercress was back out in the market today. Keep your eyes out for watercress. Not an easy product to get. And uh, watercress is really nutritionally dense and a great uh, green vegetable. Normally not the type of thing you would put into a salad. I put a little bit in my salads. Watercress also makes a nice soup. Uh, basically watercress with a little tamari soy sauce, you've got a great little soup. Watercress is really delicious. So I'll use, I'll use the spring greens. I'll use some of the watercress, sunflower, uh, the sunflower sprouts. Uh, this was a little, what, he, what they call a little gem lettuce, gorgeous little, tight as a bun, boy. A uh, little gem lettuce grown out in uh, West Marin, gorgeous, and a little dandelion. Now, I'm not going to use a lot of dandelion, just a little bit. This is really bitter, a little goes a long way. So, what we're going to do is, we'll take maybe, oh, maybe about a third of the bag of a the lettuce here, the spring mix, it's about a 
don't break up any super big pieces in there. That should be a good start. And we'll use maybe a third of the uh, sunflower sprouts. Really like sunflower sprouts. And we'll dice up a little of the. That's sort of funny. Last week, I don't know if you caught the show last week, but uh, I was making the uh, mushroom uh, green dish, uh, where I, I use. Uh, in this case, this week I'll probably make it this week with collard greens and uh, trumpet royal mushrooms. Well, last week I made a similar dish with mustard greens and uh, when I started the dish I cut my finger uh, I really sliced it badly here and I was I was uh, bleeding over the over the, <laughs> the chopping block I thought I was gonna be able to correct it I went off camera got myself a band-aid bandaged it up and it kept bleeding <laughs> a few people suggested that I leave it in and we make sort of a comedy routine out of it but it wasn't too funny <laughs> Now it is a week later. Really funny, I sliced my finger here, bleeding all over the place for like, literally I had this thing wrapped for three or four days. And then just yesterday I sliced the other finger. Now I haven't cut my fingers uh, uh, cooking in ages, or chopping, but boy I did a job on it last week. It might have been uh, symbiotic with my wife. My wife, uh, <laughs> the same finger that I cut last week, uh, my wife cut the week before that really deep cut that she kept bandaging day after day. So I think I had a, uh, a a sympathy cut for my wife and we both were on the same page with bandages on our uh, her fingers, on the same exact finger of all things. Okay, so I'm gonna dice up this, uh, the dandelion. The dandelion is really, you really want that small. You don't want a big chunk of this in your mouth. This is terribly bitter. And like I've said many times, I mix bitter with sweet a lot. And nice, nice, very nice. When I mean, you get those little types of things in there, make sure you toss them in really well. You know, like if you're making a Caesar salad, um, you want to throw the dressing in so that the, uh, the, the, the cheese gets all over everything. Same thing with the dandelion. You want to sort of really toss it together so it mixes in well. All right, so we've got one, two, three so far. So I'm going to put a little bit of the little gems in. Maybe uh, oh, five, six, seven. We'll use seven little, and this is clean as a whistle, not a piece, not a drop of dirt. Look at this. Not a not a piece of dirt in any one of the. That's how you can tell right away. You know, you open up a head of lettuce like this, or any green, uh, and you look at the base of it. You'll see if there's any dirt in there, which it needs to be cleaned. A lot of the vegetables I buy uh, require very, very, very little cleaning. This spring mix, uh, he tells you wash before uh, before eating. This is my second bag of this. I haven't found one speck of dirt in it yet. I'm going to cut this right down on the seam and then we'll give it three cuts. Okay. So I'll put a little conventional lettuce in there with the salad mix, the sprouts, the dandelion, and last but not least, my favorite watercress. Now, the thing about watercress is you have to work it a little bit. Um, the stems are pretty intense and you don't want all that stem. What you like are the greens, so I like to sort of pull the, the, uh, the leaf and the green part off the stem, get rid of as much of the stem as possible. So I was talking about this cutting my finger last week and uh, I showed it to a couple of people and everybody thought it was hilarious and oh you want to make that your TV show, yeah, yeah. <laughs> show yourself bleeding like an idiot. Uh, and then it was pointed out that uh, Julia Childs used to make all sorts of mistakes uh, when she started her show, and that was apparently part of the charm. So I haven't gotten to the point where I find my mistakes to be charming <laughs> uh, at all. Uh, so usually what happens is if I make a mistake, I wind up doing the whole show over. So I've said at the beginning of this that um, Today is Wednesday the 18th. Well, this isn't going to be on the air until the 19th because I never get them up that same day. 
Uh, I'm shooting live to tape or live to an SD card. Uh, I could go live on uh, f Facebook or one of those other things, but I, I haven't gotten that far yet. So anyway, I shoot this live onto an SD card and I don't edit anything. I haven't learned how to edit anything. I have, I have failed the Apple editing course a couple of times. Uh, I, I think I've taken it three times now and I've actually walked out of it a number of times. I just absolutely hated it. Uh, so I have it up on my screen again. I'm trying to learn how to do some editing so that I can uh, do some other things. But in the meantime, we're shooting live to tape. So I'll shoot this now and, uh, and then I'll look at it during the course of the latter part of the evening or early part of the next morning and then post it. So I usually wind up posting at 2 or 3 in the morning. Okay, so that's all the deep. Look at that. Oh. Take a little taste of. Mm. Watercress is bitter, tangy, but not overly. So when you mix it in with these other, uh, woo, you get a little. Uh, I'll bet you this might be in the mustard family. Definitely a mustardy kind of a back taste to it right now. All right, I have a little compost pail underneath the table here. So throw that in there. So that's the whole pile of greens. So I'm going to mix these all up. And then I'll, I'll show you how I put the salad together every night. So the point of the salad is I make the salads. And how much of the salad am I going to have at night? Well, sometimes I have a small salad. Sometimes I have a bigger salad. It depends on what the whole meal is. The point is I have a little bit of a salad one way or another. Uh, let me give you... Well, I guess we went off camera again. I don't know how that happened. Okay, the other night, for instance... Well, here, let me, let me pull up the breakfast. Okay, so there's, a, there's the breakfast two mornings ago. And there's a, two soft-boiled eggs in that little cup at the bottom there, and that yellow is a blob of uh, butter. I like butter. I do well with butter. And uh, to the left there's the salad and a croissant to the right. The croissant will wind up being my dessert. I'll have it at the end of the meal. And the salad over there, it's got the tomatoes and that little white uh, splotch on the uh, top of the salad. Uh, that would be the, uh, the cheese. And that's a burrata cheese. This burrata, I don't know if you've seen this before, burrata is like a much softer type of a mozzarella. It's a real soft cheese, not a hard cheese. A real soft cheese sits in water, much like a mozzarella cheese or tofu sits in water. And it's delicious. And I, I add a lot of that to the salads in the morning. Okay, so we got the green part of the salad. And I just showed you a little meal where we had an egg. Basically, the meal was, was, was an egg. And I didn't do the food combining because I had the uh, the protein egg and I had the uh, carbohydrate um, croissant at the end of the meal. I've said this before about the croissants. I eat a lot of croissants. I like bread. Uh, but bread in general is not the best thing for me because of my lungs. So I need to have low ratio ble uh, breads, less and less gluten. Croissants are made with a low ratio flour. So a croissant has about a 7 gluten ratio, whereas regular bread has about a 12, and a bagel has about a 14. They take high gluten flour and they reinforce it with more gluten. So croissants, for you people who are wheat sensitive, the croissant has the, less, the, less, the least amount of gluten of any of your flours. So that's just to keep in mind. But if I was going to go to bed at 2 in the morning and I was eating at midnight, then I would keep the food combining uh, uh, together. I would have maybe just a salad and, and uh, fish, which is what I'm going to show you uh, hopefully before the show's over here. Uh, whereas if it was earlier and I had four or five hours before I was going to go to bed, I might mix the, I might have the meat and potatoes together. And I'm not vegetarian, hardly even close. Okay, so we've got the salad there, the green part of the salad. And what we need is, the only thing I didn't bring out was the plate. Let me get the plate. Off camera, one second. Back on camera. 
this is the plate I've been using, and I've been plating food on it. I'm not. It might be too busy. If you have any comments upon this, let me know, and uh, I'll get a different plate. So what I would do is I would take about. Let's let's make a big plate here first, okay? So I would take a, a good portion of greens, put them on the plate there, and then the rest of the greens I would put in. Uh, I use these nylon breathing bags. Uh, these are really convenient. They had these uh, in the store a while ago. And a lot of your green vegetables are, brother, are better off breathing than they are packed tightly in a, uh, in a plastic bag. So I see what happened here, as I suspected, is the, the dandelion, the little pieces of dandelion, all went to the bottom so they don't mix easily at all so just now you may have noticed i sprinkled some as i was pouring it out of here the dandelion pieces were right at the bottom and i uh, sprinkled some extra on top okay so we've got that there we're starting with that then what i would do is i would add my hard vegetables to it and to him for, for the amount of salad i've got here that seems about right okay so I have this here which I'm probably going to wind up splitting into about three meals and then I've got probably enough here for three more meals so I won't have to do my hard vegetables the uh, the fennel whoops the celery and the red pepper I won't have to do these probably till for maybe four or five days okay so i got this this now the last two things i'm going to put on there before i put the sprinkle on are the cucumber and the jicama and the jicama is in very short supply the cucumber a little bit the jicama where did the, oh here it goes jicama cucumber and i'm going to throw a little tomato in today tomato is sort of also a little bit controversial for me I don't do tomato sauces. They're too acid for me, way too acid. So I can't do, I work in an Italian restaurant and I hardly ever touch the uh, tomato sauces, which are made fresh. They cook them fresh every day. But um, when you cook a tomato, it changes the pH level. So I'm gonna do five slices of cucumber on here right now. Five little slices, cut them in half, quarter them spread that across the top okay cucumber down the jicama this is the very end of the jicama so uh, you don't want it. the skin on the jicama is not good at all so you want to get the skin off it and I usually just slice it off uh, so with the tomato a raw tomato has about two points less of acid than uh, a cooked tomatoes and I got a pH meter and when I was working on the Twinkie project years ago I was curious about this so I literally measured it myself uh, measuring a tomato sauce that was on the stove against uh, the raw tomatoes you know I'm just going to use the whole of uh, we'll get rid of all the skin on this jicama is really interesting uh, it has a sort of a sweet sort of a cro it's like a pineapple-y coconut kind of thing it's, got a coconutty kind of a texture to it and uh, uh, crunchy interesting uh, and nutritionally it's dyna it's loaded with nutrients I was shocked I thought it was going to be a lot of empty calories but I, I looked it up in my uh, one of my technical books the other day and it was just loaded with uh, uh, nutraceuticals all sorts of interesting things in there okay now tomatoes I'll tell you if you're not getting some heirloom tomatoes right now, run out and buy one, will you? These things are sensational. They're absolutely sensational. The heirloom tomatoes that you're getting in your organic health food store, which is where I hope you're shopping, are absolutely spectacular right now. Um, we've got them at the store downtown, the restaurant I work in, we've got them. Uh, we're making mozzarella caprese's. Uh, I could make a little uh, burrata cheese with the uh, tomatoes, but these tomatoes are, I mean, spectacular. So I'll put a little tomato on there just because of the color alone. It's worth it. 
Okay, so when I'm done for the day, this is the salad that I'm starting with. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it out into a couple of more days. So I put this together for today, now, and that's, that's bigger than I normally would make it, way bigger. Uh, I'm going to try to squeeze as much as I can into there without the tomato pieces on it, though. I don't want the tomato being uh, going in there for, for two, two days or something. So I've got enough of tonight's salad, and this will be definitely for breakfast tomorrow for sure and possibly even dinner. So I've got two more salads in here. I've got tomorrow's breakfast and tomorrow's dinner and tonight's, tonight's dinner meal. So I'm going to put this away and there's my salad for the week. So i got this salad for the next almost week. These are my next whole salad for the next few days. Leave that to the side. So last night for dinner what we had was the salad and I had fish. We had fish. We had uh, sole. I had petrali sole, a line caught petrali sole from the Pacific Coast. It was, I think, about $16 a pound at the health food store. And literally, uh, line caught petrali sole. And we cooked it last night. I'm not going to cook it today. I cooked it last night. And what I did was I used breadcrumbs and an egg. This is one of my wife's favorite meals. It's definitely comfort food for us. So I break the egg into the dish there, scramble it all up, put the uh, crumbs on another plate. Then I take the fish, dip it into the egg, and then coat it with the crumbs. So it's a little bit of a mix. There's a you know, little bit of a carbohydrate on top of the protein, but it's not enough to write home about. So that's what I did. So the meal was the uh, filet of sole, and what we do is our favorite meal, and I'm not going to make the whole thing now because I did it last night. I buy a can of baked beans, classic baked beans, and the classic baked beans should have a little bit of maple syrup in them. And for some reason, they stopped selling the one with the maple syrup, so I added a little on my own. A little drizzle. That was the beans. So, and potato salad, which I didn't make. Uh, so I buy the potato salad, which they make at the store also. So I buy the potato salad, the beans, cook the fish, add the salad. So the comfort meal, it was late when we ate last night. And I said to myself, well, I don't need to mix uh, the potatoes and the beans and all of that. So what I did was basically I had the salad and all I had with the salad was the fish. So uh, fish on the salad, and that basically was dinner. It was just the fish and the salad on the plate. And then what I do with the salad at the end of it is we add the little sprinkle, my topping, and this is running out. The topping definitely is running out, and I'll probably have to make this before the day's over olive oil and a little pepper olive oil you don't have to be shy with the olive oil uh, you can hardly eat too much olive oil you could probably do a quarter of a cup of olive oil a day and the worst that would happen is your skin would improve seriously a little pepper boom that's it fish should be the other way so it's ah, much better looking, yes. All right, so that would have been, that was basically last night's dinner. About that much fish, great big salad, and a lemon, lemon, had to have a lemon. In fact, it was really funny. Uh, let me put the lemon there, it doesn't look right. Off camera one second again, and back on camera, a lemon. Now, much better. The fish needs a lemon. And um, I was ready to serve dinner last night and with no lemons in the house. And I had been shopping that same day and had almost grabbed the lemon and thought, oh, no, I think we have some at home. Well, we didn't. So I was ready to go out at 10 o'clock last night to go get some lemon. And my wife says, Diane says, 
Oh, I have a half a dozen lemons on top of the refrigerator for this lemon uh, cake I'm making next week. Well, voila. We've got the lemon, the sole, and the salad. Bada bing. Beautiful. I'm going to push this out of the way for the time being. And clean this off. Well, we're 25 minutes in, so I'm not going to talk about the other foods. What I am going to talk about a tiny bit, a couple of minutes, is if you're not getting the organic and non-GMO report in your health food store, where I hope you're shopping, ask them to get it. The organic and non-GMO report, it's one of those freebie magazines. And um, the Good Earth in Fairfax has been intimately involved with the non-GMO movement for 20, uh, since the 60s, since the late 60s. In here, uh, we've only got a couple of minutes. I, I like to try to finish up within a half hour. Regenerative, regenerative farming. We can farm without pesticides. Eliminate all of the caustic inputs that are harming our bodies. We can farm without these inputs. Let's figure out how to move forward and make it happen. And what these guys are doing here, they're using roller crimpers, a roller crimper. Not tilling the soil, but a roller crimper. They're flattening the cover crop which provides mulch for the soybeans, provides a mulch, rather than tilling it into the soil, which it turns out regenerates weeds. Whereas if you till it down, cut it down and let it mulch in, it doesn't produce more, more uh, uh, weeds. The regenerative movement is gaining traction. That was one uh, statement thing that was sort of interesting in here. There's a whole bunch of articles in here were very interesting this month, including Tom Vilsack. If any of you had a chance to ever go to my website, greenagevideo.com, uh, there's a letter to the editor about Tom Vilsack, which is anything but complimentary. And he seemed to be really anti um, the whole anti GMO movement uh, about 10 years ago when I wrote the. Uh, the letter to the editor, uh, he seems to have changed his position entirely. He seems to have done a head 180 degrees. I'm looking into this to get some more input. Uh, about the uh, regenerative farming, there's a little, I'm going to end with the poem. Let me go first to the GMO ice cream rushed to the market. Unbelievable. GMO ice cream has been rushed to the market. The urgent company launched brave robot ice cream they're using symbio symbio is a gmo genetically modified organism technique that involves altering the dna of microorganisms like algae bacteria and yeast to produce compounds that increase the flavor and the proteins in the food the most popular uh, or famous of these products would be the Impossible Burger, which uh, we read about maybe almost three, four years ago now, and they developed a thing called HEM, H-E-M-E, as in hemoglobin, H-E-M-E, heme, and it, it, it makes the burger appear to bleed like red meat. Now, they've been saying since day one, Impossible Food, that it's not GMO. Um, people in the industry are saying it is GMO. And the big thing about GMOs, modified organisms, it's not a simple matter of let's add this to that. They when they when they when they put these in, when they splice in say the Roundup, it's a violent chemical reaction which causes other things to happen. So it's not it's not safe. It's not safe. It's been proven unsafe, and uh, we're going to continue to report on this as we get little tidbits of information. Last but not least, uh, Levi Lee whose father developed a fourth stage lung cancer from the, which appeared to be from the uh, glyphosates that were in the Roundup that the farmer was using. Well, they're, they've been uh, repurposing the soils and moving part of their farm over to regenerative agricultural practices. And as a result, they've increased their farm income by almost $40 an acre for the corn and $12 an acre for the soybeans because they don't have to buy the expensive uh, patented GMO seeds. Um, 
they're not using uh, the herbicides to kill the rest of the uh, um, insects that are the rest of the uh, weeds that are growing on the on the on the farm there, and they're saving on fuel fuel cross fuel because of the spraying. So with all of these savings, they're actually making more money using regenerative agricultural techniques than they were with the chemical farming. And Levi, uh, Levi Lyle is a uh, Iowa farmer poet, Iowa farmer poet. And here's a little poem by him that will end. The longer I farm, the more I find I've got weeds of every kind. Hit them with Roundup, chemically blast at first, they died, but it did not last. Hit them a second time at a double rate. Now my food smells of glyphosate on my plate. I'm sick of the poison, the bitter taste. You can't beat nature at her own race. Mama Paul in the kitchen. Peace, patience, persistence, and we'll see you as soon as we can. Thanks for joining. Thanks for joining today.